morning everyone and welcome to the Novels and Needles podcast. I'm your host Heather and it is a kind of turned gloomy sort of late fall day here in Michigan. Um, it is Monday November 14th for reference sake. Um, I just want to say welcome Welcome everyone for tuning in and watching me. Uh, if you are new, thank you so much for checking me out. I hope you enjoy what you see. If you do, um, I'd love for you to hit like or hit subscribe. That's great. Um, if you're returning, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back and spending part of your day with me. I, it makes me really excited to uh, share this with everyone. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, like I said, I'm Heather. This is the Novels and Needles podcast, and the idea of this podcast is to kind of combine two of the things that I love most, and that would be reading and knitting. So I spend the first part of the podcast talking about what I'm reading, uh, what I've finished recently, and then the second half of the podcast I talk about knitting. Uh, it tends to be heavier on the knitting because there's only so many books that I can read at a time. Um, there's a little bit more knitting content, um, but that's definitely what my focus is. If you want to listen to one and not the other, that's fine. I break it up into sections so you are free to skip ahead or um, whatever, whatever works for you. I just thank you so much for tuning in and checking me out. Um, so last week, I'm not going to dwell a whole lot on um, what happened. I just want to say that the knitting community has been really awesome and knitters have been doing a lot of things to kind of step up and combat the negativity and the hatred that went along with the presidential election. Um, definitely the people in the knitting community have kind of restored my faith a little bit in humanity. There was, it was a rough week last week. Um, I am definitely wearing my safety pin um, to promote that. Um, if you don't know, um, the safety pin is a symbol that is being worn by people that indicate that they are a safe person to talk to, to approach, um, to ask for help if you need it, if you are um, one of the groups that has the potential to be targeted hostily post the election. Um, so if you see these, if you want to wear them, that would be great. Um, I think we need to rally together and create a community of love and support for all our fellow Americans. So that's enough about that. I don't want to dwell on it because it's a lot of, a lot of negativity. Um, I ask everyone to bear with me a little bit. I've kind of got a raspy throat. Um, I'm not feeling the greatest, so I might keep this one kind of on the short side because I just am not feeling the greatest. And you might see me grabbing for my water um, as my throat or my voice might start to go out a little bit. So thanks for hanging in and uh, putting up with a scratchy throat. So I just want to say that anyone who's watching uh, if you happen to have your own podcast, um, knitting especially, but anything else, please let me know. Um, you can leave a comment and link me to that information. You're checking me out. I would love to return the favor and check you out. I know it can be hard to kind of get out there, so maybe if we help each other out, we can promote, um, promote each other's podcast. And I would definitely love to check yours out. So... You can leave a comment, um, you can message me on Ravelry or Instagram, I will have all that information um, on the screen for where you can contact me. I do have a Ravelry group for the podcast where I put show notes and links to the things that I talk about, so definitely check that out. There's an introduction thread, so if you do join, um, pop in and say hello, I'd love to know who you are. and. Um, yeah, it's a pretty small group right now, but, you know, maybe as things go on, we'll get a little bit bigger. Um, I think that's about it for my business. Um, 
So we are going to go ahead and get started on the novels. Alright, so what have I been reading? I finished the audiobook that I was listening to and that was May the Road Rise Up to Meet You by Peter Troy. As I said, that was an audiobook and I really enjoyed the audiobook format. Um, this is a novel told from the perspective of four different people and the audiobook had a different reader for each character and I really liked that a lot. It really helped you kind of get into the feel and the mindset of the characters and so I really liked that touch with it. So the four characters are coming from different parts of life. Uh, the first is an Irish immigrant named Ethan and it starts off he is in Ireland and they're kind of dealing with the famine in Ireland and his sister who he is really close to has just died and his father and older brother had emigrated to America earlier and he was getting ready to go join them so he does and he goes to America and he ends up enlisting in the Union Army because this is set during the Civil War and he become, travels with them and he is a photographer and he takes some really cool uh, photographs of the Civil War and some of the things surrounding it. Um, so he was the first character. The, um, then there was another free person, we'll say, for just sake of distinguishing, and that is Marcella. And she was a Spanish immigrant who had come over with her family. Her grandma was left behind in Spain, but she was there with her father and brothers and mother and sister. And her father and brothers are kind of, they sound like shady characters. Marcella, I have to say, was probably my favorite character in the book because she was just such a strong person and really stood up for the rights of women in a time when women did not have any. And I just really loved her character a lot. Um, she starts to become involved in the Underground Railroad and it starts, she wins money at poker at the beginning and she takes those winnings and she sends them down south to help fund uh, liberating slaves from slavery in the south. And so she is definitely a really awesome character, and um, I really have enjo really enjoyed listening to her parts. Um, she is in New York, and Ethan is in New York, so they those two end up together and um, happen to get married. And I hope I don't think I'm giving away too much, even though. There's no major like plot twists or twists or anything like that, and there's not a ton of action happening in this book. I think the social study of it and the quality of the interactions and the writing make it a really worthwhile book to read, and I really did enjoy it. So Ethan and Marcella are the first two characters. And then the second two characters are May, who is a slave, and she starts off she's lost her parents and she's kind of in the care of another um, slave woman named Gertie and they try to escape together but they don't they don't make it and Gertie ends up being killed in the process and um, May gets sold to a family in Virginia and it turns out that May is an excellent seamstress and so she becomes very valuable to this family first as a companion to the daughter Justinia and then as a seamstress working in their dress shop and making just amazing dresses and doing amazing things with that. Um, so that's kind of how her story begins. Um, the, the final character that we are introduced to is another slave named Micah and he his story begins he lives with his father and mother and sister on a plantation called Le Jose Ve, 
I am not sure where it is. I'm guessing Louisiana. I can't remember where it is. I'm sorry. Um, but the master and his father had this agreement that if he was, they were able to sell so many bunches of indigo from this indigo field, then he would be able to buy his son's freedom, buy Micah's freedom. However, the master ends up dying and there is no one to honor this agreement. So because of the state, I guess, that the plantation was left in, Micah and his father were both sold off. And Micah was sold to Virginia and um, his father was sold to Alabama, maybe Mississippi, I can't remember. Um, so we kind of follow Micah as he goes to Richmond, Virginia, where he becomes a very accomplished, carp accomplished, not accomplished, accomplished carpenter and is doing a lot of carpentry work and becomes very popular with that. So his story and May's story cross in Richmond, Virginia, when he begins to do some work for a company, well, a slave owner who owned a company, um, and they are doing some remodeling for the dress shop that May works in. And so they have kind of a romance that starts there. The story starts to shift as Micah decides that he is going to run away. And again, we're in the throes of the Civil War, so the South is kind of really shaken up and they're not really sure what's going to happen. Um, the Union Army is losing, but they're still coming. Abraham Lincoln is passing all of his legislation to free all the slaves, but no one in the South is honoring it. So. Micah decides it's time to run away and he's going to go up north and get away and he wants to take May with him. But it turns out that May does not want to go. Um, well, she did, but then she got scared and ended up staying behind. And as the stories kind of all come together, um, uh, Micah ends up meeting Ethan and Marcella in New York and they kind of team up and uh, become friends. And... I'm going to stop right there, I think, because I don't want to give away any more of the story than I already have, other than to say that I really, really enjoyed it. It was a very positive story, even though it had the elements of slavery in it, um, and that was definitely a downer, but I felt like there was so much hope and inspiration from the characters in the story that even that tainted element of the things that were happening is taken away by by that and the writing is great and the characters are wonderful characters i gave this four stars on goodreads which is a big deal i don't give many four or five star ratings to books um but this was definitely a four star book so i do recommend this a lot especially if you like historical fiction especially if you like anything Civil War era. I thought it was thought it was a great book. So um, I really recommend that one. So last week um, I talked a little bit about a book that I wanted to read that was told from the vantage point of the father of Little Women, but I had never read Little Women and so I thought to have a better frame of reference I should probably read Little Women. So I discovered that um, an ebook format of that fruit through the Gutenberg project was available for free, and so I started to read the ebook. I don't care for reading ebooks. I'd much rather hold a physical book in my hand. Um, in reading the ebook, I kept falling asleep. I did not <laughs> make it like a couple pages, and I use the pages very loosely because this isn't really broken up into loose, or into pages that much as this neat book, and I'd fall asleep. And I thought, okay, I really need to read this. This is a classic. I do really need to read Little Women, and I discovered that it was available in audiobook, and so now I've started to listen to it as my audiobook, now that my other one is over. So I am reading another Civil War era book. Um, in the auto audiobook format of Little Women. I am pretty early into it. I think that there are definitely some of the sisters that I'm going to relate to more 
and others that are going to drive me crazy. I don't have a whole lot to say about it because I'm only like a chapter and a half into it and it is a pretty lengthy book. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to get through it. I think it's something like 19 listening hours. So it's a hefty listen. So, and that's by uh, Louisa May Alcott, for those of you who may not know. So Little Women is the current audiobook. And so I was thinking about what physical book I wanted to start reading and I kind of was getting an itch to go back and reread a series that I love and so I decided that I was going to go do that because I needed, I needed it. Um, so I am rereading Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Um, this is a series on stars now as well that's just finished finished its second season over the summer. I think it's it's a summer season. So this is one of my favorite series and I decided that I was going to start reading it again and then I would go back and watch the seasons again because I do really really love this story. Um, so I'm reading Outlander again and I, it's definitely one of my favorite series. I think that and Harry Potter are probably my top two series and I don't really feel like you can compare them a whole lot because Harry Potter is one thing and this is something very 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 different. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Outlander, it is really a series that is a genre all its own. I don't you could call it historical fiction, you could call it romance, I've even seen it labeled a little bit into sci-fi and fantasy. There is definitely a broad scope of this. So Outlander begins in 1945, post World War II, and Claire, the main character, is going on kind of like a second honeymoon with her husband Frank into the Scottish Highlands. And they were separated during the war, so they got married like right before the war started and then, well, maybe not right before it started, but right before they both ended up being taken away by the war. So they hadn't had a whole lot of time together before they were separated by the war. Frank was in, intel was in intelligence and Claire served as a nurse, so she has some medical background. So they go on this little second honeymoon to the highlands of Scotland and they happen to visit a ring of standing stones called Krang the Dune. And it so happens that there is a story that, su that surrounds these standing stones of the fairies and going through the fairy world and disappearances. And um, Claire visits the standing stones first with a man who is showing her about the plants of the region and she remembers seeing one and thinking she wants to go back to collect the specimen later. Well, she and Frank end up going back to observe a pagan ritual that's happening uh, because it's right around Beltane. Yeah, Beltane. Ooh, Beltane? Yes, Beltane, I'm sorry. Um, and so they go back and they observe this ritual early in the morning and then they leave and Frank goes off to do his own thing and Claire goes back to gather this flower that she saw and as she there is there she happens to touch one of the stones and lo and behold she is transported back in time to 1742 I believe it is and falls right into the middle of a skirmish between English dragoons and Scots. So she ends up meeting these Scots and gets taken away on this Scottish adventure and the way that the whole thing turns out she ends up falling in love with um, one of the Scots and ends up getting married to him Jamie and um, it's just a really great story of their relationship and it's a whole series that's out I think there's seven books and they're all really really big books um, so and written really, really well, and Claire is such a fantastic character, and Jamie, everybody needs a Jamie. Everybody really needs a Jamie. Um, so I'm reading Outlander again. Uh, she's just gone back through the stones where I'm at and has been brought to Castle Yock, 
which is a home of the Mackenzie clan, which er, Dougal Mackenzie is one of the Scots who rescues her from the English, who happens to be a ancestor of her husband Frank, um, Black Jack Randall, and he is not a nice guy, and so all sorts of mayhem is ensuing. Um, so I just, I really love the series. It's a lot of fun to read. Um, I really recommend it because it's just, it's, it's fun. Especially if you like series, there's a lot of it to read, a lot of it to get through. And so I'm really enjoying that and I'm looking forward to going back and, and watching it again on Stars. So, and it'll probably be a little while that I'm reading this as well. So it may be all of the same books next week, but we'll be a little bit farther and I can talk about uh, Definitely Little Women a little bit more than I was able to this week. So, I think that's it for the novels portion. I want to thank you for listening to it. Um, if you're not interested in the knitting, that's totally fine. You can stop here. If you are, then I will see you in a couple minutes for the knitting. for my knitting. Um, I am probably going to keep this short because I'm definitely starting to not feel very well and um, my throat is getting quite scratchy so you will probably see the water pop in a few times in this one, this section. So bear with me as I kind of muddle through this part. So um, in the realm of knitting, I have not been listening to any new podcasts or watching any new podcasts. I've kind of been with the same ones, but there are a couple more that I think I might be interested in checking out. Um, and if I do, I will definitely let you know what those are next week. Um, so I do have a finished object this week. You saw these uh, last week. And those are the Rose City Rollers. My neighbor is like doing something out the window and so I'm a little bit like, hmm, what are you doing? Um, so these are the Rose City Rollers. These are going to be a Christmas gift for Abby, uh, my daughter, who is 11. Um, this is the first time I have done a cuff down sack. Um, I've always done toe up before because I'm a freak, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why I've always done toe up. I think because it's how I learned and that's what I got most comfortable with and cuff down and heel flaps really kind of scared me and intimidated me. So I did cuff down with a heel flap. I will say cosmetically, I definitely prefer the look of a short row heel or a fish lips kiss heel. I'm not sure I care for like the ribbing effect of uh, the heel flap. I'm not sure how it's gonna fit her because it seemed kind of narrow at the bottom. So I'll be interested to see how the heel actually fits her. I definitely liked the pattern. It was just a really quick knit. We all like shorties in our house, so the fact that they're shorties um, was really nice. I am a little bit worried that maybe this isn't going to be long enough, but I knit for an inch and a half like the pattern called for, but I'm still a little bit worried that it's not going to be long enough. I'm not sure because I'm not sure how this heel flap is really going to sit on, the, on her foot. So we'll find out. Um, I did a rounded toe instead of a more pointed toe so you can see it's it's kind of more rounded because she definitely has a square foot like I do and doesn't have uh, a pointy foot. This is the first time I did Kitchener stitch which wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. I was really intimidated and afraid of it but it was really pretty simple. So. Oh, and these I knit in um, Knit Picks Felici, the fanciful colorway. And they, these are really fun and really cute. And the yarn holds up fairly well, but the dye job I was not entirely super crazy about. Like, if you can see here in the lavender, you can kind of see how it bleeds a little bit with the darker colors and even a little bit in the blue. And so I wasn't super excited about that. But since they're for my daughter and they're just kind of a fun, inexpensive yarn, I'm okay with it. You know, you 
you get what you pay for and um but I'm I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it because they're just going to be they're going to be used for her and she's going to do god knows what in them. So, the Rose City Rollers, great pattern, really enjoyed it. Um I will probably make another pair for myself. I that could very well will be a sock pattern that I will do several times because it's just it's quick, it's easy, it's mindless so you can do something else. Next time I do it, I think I will put a Fish Lips Kiss heel on to see how that fits versus the heel flap. I, but other than that, um, I don't think I would alter that pattern at all. I really liked it. So that's all I have for finished objects. Um, as you know, I've got several that are going already. And so um, I've been I'm kind of trying to work on getting those off the needles as I'm working on uh, pretty much holiday knitting and then I've got a pair of socks going for myself that you'll see in a second. So my next work in progress is in my lovely project bag from Lara of the Fawn Knits podcast. Um, this is from her um, Etsy shop, The Fawn and the Fox. I love this project bag. I did not think a project bag could make me so happy as this one makes me. It sounds so silly and so ridiculous, but this project bag makes me so incredibly happy. I just like, I love it. So this next project is housed in here. It's got this really cute blue polka dot interior. Love it. And that, so the project that's in here, that is my Pincha shawl by Pin Pilin Wang Sai. This is from the online knitting magazine Knitty. And this is what I've got so far. So you kind of knit these individual feathers in short rows. Let me get my yarn out of the way so it's a little less ooky. And it just really does a beautiful job accentuating variegated yarns. I really don't think it would look this amazing on a solid or even a tonal unless you did like alternating colors or something like that but it really highlights that so I'm up to 13 feathers I think mine ended up being 24 feathers is how many mine was I might go a little bit more than that I might go I'm not sure because the person that I'm giving it to is a little bit bigger than I am and I don't know yet. I'll see where it's at at 25, 24 feathers and see how much yarn I have left. But I had a fair amount of yarn left when I did this before. I was able to make like two little mini bags with it. So this is where I was last week. So this is kind of how far I've gotten. Um, it's a pretty easy knit, but you do kind of have to pay attention because of the short rows. However, the variegatedness of the yarn makes it easy to kind of keep track of where you are. So it's not super complicated. Uh, you can knit it up pretty quickly. I think I can do knit a whole feather in about an hour. Um, so it's not it's not a super super complicated knit. A lot of fun. I do really love this pattern. I think it it's just a, a really fun pattern. So I like that a lot. Uh, I am knitting this in another Knit Picks yarn. This is how much I have left, and I'm about halfway done. Um, so, oops. <laughs> Run away yard! Um, there'll definitely be some leftovers of this. And this is a Knit Pick Stroll hand painted. And that's what I knit my other one in. This is the Northern Lights colorway. So it's got some really nice purples and turquoise and blue and lavender. Um, it's just, it's a nice, it's a pretty yarn. I do like Knit Pick Stroll yarn. It's a really inexpensive yarn. Holds up pretty well for socks. It does have nylon in it. It's a merino nylon blend. And I do really, I really do like this yarn a lot. And I think it's a great value yarn. And definitely for um, gifting, it's great because it's a super wash and it's not super expensive. And so you don't really have to worry too much about care. So I do recommend this yarn um, for, for, the, for those things. So that is my Pincha shawl. Um, coming along with that, I'm hoping that I can finish that up this week. I think that should definitely be doable. I'm going to work on it more than I did last week. Um, I was kind of focused more on the Rose City Rollers 
and my own stocks, which I'm going to show you next in a very unexciting Estee Lauder makeup bag from a thrift store. So to sh just goes to show you, if you are knitting on a budget, there are ways to get project bags that are really, really useful um, without spending a lot of money on them. A friend of mine found this in a thrift store for like a dollar and she picked it up. It has a little notions pouch that goes with it. Um, it's perfect for knitting socks two at a time. You can fit two balls of yarn in there just perfectly. Uh, it's back. I had a little bit of an interruption there. Um, my mom called and on Mondays I go out to her house and give her an injection that she has to have every week because she doesn't, she can't do it herself. She will like pass out. So I had to go do that. So I'm back now to finish this podcast. So before I had to go run and stab my mother, um, I was showing, getting ready to show you the socks that I am working on for myself. And these are the Here Be Dragons socks by Rachel Gent. And I am loving how these are knitting up. I'm knitting them two at a time because I really am liking knitting two at a time socks. Um, I think it just feels like it goes a lot faster even though um, it's probably the same amount of time. It feels a lot faster to me. This pattern that makes it kind of look like dragon scales I think is just so cool and this yarn that I'm using which is um, Expression Fiber Arts Resilient Superwash Merino Sock. It is such a mouthful. And this is the Demeter colorway and it is it's plied so tightly that it just gives this wonderful stitch definition and I'm really really enjoying knitting with this this yarn um, it's a hand dyed yarn but it's, it's definitely not giving me any bleeding issues which is really nice um, it's kind of tonal a little bit in this colorway it's not a true true green it's more of a almost like a really deep turquoise. There's kind of like a blue undertone to it um, that's just, it's a really nice color. I really, really like the yarn. I love the stitch definition that I'm getting out of it. I'm really excited to finish these socks and get them on my feet because I think, I think they're going to feel fantastic. Um, I've kind of been alternating these and the Pinches Shawl. Um, but I'm going to focus a little bit more on the pinch of shawl because I'd like to get that done. Um, but I am, I'm really enjoying knitting these. They are not, by any stretch of the imagination, a mindless knit. Um, it's not a complicated knit, but it's all charted so every row is a little bit different. And, um, they just, they, they do require you to kind of pay attention a little bit to what you're doing. That being said, the effect is beautiful and I love it and I've got my my sorting hat um, stitch marker progress keeper that I'm using for it um, because they're dragon socks and that felt very Harry Potterish to me so I needed to use my my sorting hat so these are these are gonna be for me I need more more hand knitted socks in my wardrobe I only have two three I have three pairs, um, but definitely, definitely need to have more. So those are my Here Be Dragon socks. And then I have another pair of socks that I just started. Um, so these are really not that exciting to look at. They're just, um, just starting the toe. Very simple, very little. These are another gift. Um, my little watermelon progress keeper. Uh, this is yarn that... Um, someone had given me, and I had, I thought these would, they would make kind of funky socks, but I just hadn't done anything with it. And so I decided to go ahead and cake it up and knit some socks with it. Uh, and the yarn is Fibra Natura The Yummy Base, which is 100% superwash wool. 
and the colorway, there wasn't a name for the colorway, there was just a number, and that was 41358. And it's blue and orange, and it's kind of like a brownie purple, maybe. Might be the other one. It, they feel very fall to me. They're very autumnal with like this burst of blue that just kind of, it makes me think of like tree fall trees and then like a blue sky, like a beautiful fall day is kind of what it makes me think of. Um, but I will say that caking up this yarn was not very fun. It was kind of strange. There were three breaks in the skein. So the first two, I, I did a Russian join and just joined them together while I was working on it because I didn't want to knot it and just kept going with the cake. But then after I ran into the second break, I or sorry, there are two breaks, so it was broken into like three pieces. After I ran into the second break, I thought, well, um, I'm just going to cake that separately. And I looked at it, and it was actually a 130 gram skein. So I have like an 80 gram skein, and then I have, or an 80 gram cake, and then I have like a 50 gram cake. Um, so I just did them separately. And I'm actually, because... I could see myself getting really annoyed with this pattern. Um, I'm doing the scatter bee socks and I'm not to the patterned part yet. I'm gonna do these sort of two at a time but they're on double pointed needles because I don't have needles to magic loop. I don't have the right size needles to magic loop these. So and my other and I have I have some already going. So I cast on both both socks. The other one is just like nothing. Um, and then I thought I'll do the toe of this one and then I'll do the toe of the other one and then I'll do like the foot of this one and then I'll do the foot of the other one and then I'll do the heel. And that's my plan. I don't know if I'm gonna actually do it or not because I think the pattern, I don't know. It looks really cool and I want to try it but there's like some wrapping that happens and picking that back up. So I'm going to give it a try. If I'm not loving it, I do have another backup plan for this. So um, I am going gonna, gonna to give it a try and see how it goes. And I will update you with it next week because these are going to be, these and the pinch of shawl will probably be the things I'm primarily working on. Um, my dragon socks, um, it's going to kind of get put on hold. So those are all my works in progress. Um, just three. I do not have any acquisitions. I've been trying to be really good about that, um, especially with the holidays coming up. So no acquisitions. Um, no surprise packages at the post office this week. Um, as far as what I'm going to cast on, I don't think I'm going to cast on anything this week. I think I'm going to work on what I've got. I want to finish the pinch of shawl. I want to make some progress on those socks. And then um, if I finish the Pinterest shawl, then my uh, focus is going to go to my dragon socks. So I don't know that I'm going to cast on anything new this week. I might. I don't know for sure. I really want to get everything off my needles. Not that I'm the kind of person who has stuff lang languishing on my needles. Nothing that I have on my needles has been like sitting that work done. Um, I mean, my temperature blanket, I am working on it every day. That's a year long project that I committed to. So that's not really languishing on my needles. Um, my cozy memories blanket, I didn't show because it hasn't really gotten very much bigger, but that's just gonna kind of be a in progress sort of thing too. And that's not actually on needles because you finish it and you don't leave it sitting on needles because of the nature of the pattern. So that'll just kind of, that's just kind of growing as I have um, yarn to work on it. And I need to use up some more, because I have a bunch of like 25 grams of yarn. And I haven't decided if I want to try to incorporate some of those skeins together to make something with some color work or if I want to just make mini skeins out of those and maybe set those away for swaps or potentially a giveaway. I may do a giveaway on here. 
especially if I reach a milestone episode. So I haven't been adding to that necessarily unless I just have a very small amount of yarn left. So I'm still kind of waffling around on that. But I do want to work on getting thing, things off my needles and have empty needles on January 1st because I'm toying around with this idea and it would be really cool if people jumped in and joined me. Um, and I get the idea from going back and watching Legacy Knits podcasts. And in May, Sue did uh, Stitch Mania, which was cross stitch, but it was every day for, it was like the first 15 days of May or something like that, she started a new stitching project. And I was kind of thinking that maybe I will try something like that at the beginning of the year to kind of get a new start. Not 15, because that's way, way, way too many. But I was thinking maybe for like the first week of January, every day cast on a new project. One of those would be a temperature blanket for 2017 because I would like to do that. So that would for sure be one of my cast ons. Um, but I'm just kind of thinking that that might be kind of fun and kind of use up some of the yarn that I've got in my stash and tick some things off of my Ravelry queue. That might be my condition as it's only stuff that's on my Ravelry queue that I'm going to use. And I want to, I think that might be fun. So that's an idea that I'm I'm toying around with. More to come on that later if I decide to do it and maybe we'll make a maybe we'll make a thing out of it with like a giveaway or something in the new year. I don't know. So that's gonna be my that's an idea that I have. Other than that I think that's about everything that I have. I don't know that my voice is gonna hold on a whole lot longer to say anything else but I just want to say thank you everyone for watching um, and bearing with the interruptions and scratchy voices and droopy eyes and all those things as I'm not feeling the greatest. So thank you for hanging in there with me and I want to say have a great week everybody and happy knitting!